Hey, what's up, everybody? It's David Draftbit, and we've released a new feature that lets you import your REST API connections using an open API schema. So if you're not familiar with an open API schema, the open API spec is basically a way for humans and computers to discover and understand the capabilities of, the, of a REST API without accessing the source code or the documentation. So it's basically a way for an API to tell the outside world what its endpoints are, what kind of data these endpoints expect, what kind of data the endpoints return, whether they require authentication, all that kind of stuff. So using the open API schema for a REST API in DraftBit, we can actually take that schema and automatically generate all the endpoints for your app for you automatically. And I can show you an example of that using Xano. So in my Xano workspace here, I'm going to switch over to my API and I've got this route group here for app. Clicking into that, you can see I've got two different endpoints, basically endpoint groups, auth and articles. And right up here, there's a button that says Swagger documentation. Swagger is what it was previously known as. So if you see Swagger and you see open API spec or schema, these are all the same things. Clicking on Swagger documentation, this is going to open up um, a visual representation of what that schema looks like. Usually the schema is in JSON, but it can also be in YAML. For DraftBit apps, we expect the JSON version, but this is just a like a nice GUI for reading that JSON. And you can see I've got my different route groups here, and each one of these is telling me what kind of parameters it expects, what the request body should look like, if there's any of these parameters that are required, so if I'm going to post an article, it's going to tell me what's required. If, it, if it's authorized, it gives me some status codes that it returns, all kinds of good stuff. One thing to note is not all backend services will provide this, but if you're using Xano or you're using Supabase or Directus, some of the other big name backends as a service, then most of them have this available and you'll be able to pull it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to here and this little guy right here, I can just copy this link and then switching back to the builder, opening up the data modal, I'm going to click on rest API and there's a new option here, configuration mode. And I'm going to switch that over to open API. Now there's a new section here. We can configure the schema URL. I'm going to paste in that URL that we got. Remember, we want JSON. They won't all look like this. They won't, all, not all endpoints will require this type JSON. So make sure that you refer to the documentation for whatever service you're using on how they expect you to tell them what type of data formats you want. It might be in a header. It might be in the query string. So just check it out here. It's in the query string. So type equals JSON and then the next thing is going to be the refresh interval. So um, by default, it's manual. But if you want, we can automatically refresh your endpoints every week or every month. So this is especially handy during development when your API and your database may be going through a lot of changes on a regular basis and you don't want to have to come in and constantly manually refresh um, weekly and monthly or options. Obviously, you can come in here at any time and refresh the schema and it will update all your endpoints according to whatever the latest spec is that your API is exposing. And then finally is going to be headers. Sometimes you might need to authenticate to access these schemas for your API. In fact, a lot of times they are behind authentication. So in that case, if you need an authorization header with a token or a key or whatever, put that in. In this case, mine's just public. So I'm going to fetch the schema and you can see it told me that it was valid and it's been imported. So once that's done, I can save my service and then boom, just like that, I've got endpoints here configured and ready to go all out of the box. So Every single one of these is ready to use, nothing else required.
coming in, I can show you for this add articles record. Some of the props are going to be locked when you're using open API spec. You can detach them from the open API spec if you want, and they'll become manual, but that's a one way decision. So if you decide to detach it, it's detached permanently. But in any case, you can rename this. We've locked the, the HTTP method here. You can switch the object and the role if you need to. The path is going to be locked as well as query parameters. There aren't any for this particular endpoint, but if the API spec tells us that it has query parameters, any of them there will be locked. And then same thing here with the body structure. We've already input here exactly what's needed. We even put a exclamation mark here, a bang at the end to let it know that these are required props inside that body structure. You can change and update the headers and then the variables here, just where you're going to pass in. These are required as we saw in the request body. Um, but these are ready to go out of the box. So no need to come in here and configure anything unless you want to come in and pass some default values. If you do, if there is a required value, and you want to test, you'll need to add a value there to test. But otherwise, everything is good to go. We even cache uh, the data schema for you. So everything's good. Back here on my fetch, I can grab that app and get, let's see, query all records. And that's, that's it. I've got access to my list of articles right out of the gates. I can pass it the title from that list item and the body from that list item. And I've got an author from the list item. And then there you go, that's it. So that's a quick look at the new API, open API imports. If you wanna know some more, there's a new page in the docs that go over more of this stuff. And we'll probably put out some more videos around different smaller concepts with the open API spec and the endpoint updates. So that's a look for now and I'll see you in the next video.